Russian military build up huge deployment in the Arctic, satellite images show. Russia is amassing unprecedented military might in the Arctic and testing its newest weapons in a region freshly ice-free due to the climate emergency, in a bid to secure its northern coast and open up a key shipping route from Asia to Europe. Weapons experts and Western officials have expressed particular concern about one Russian super-weapon, the Poseidon 2M39 torpedo. Development of the torpedo is moving fast with Russian President Vladimir Putin requesting an update on a key stage of the tests in February from his defense minister Sergei Shuigu, with further tests planned this year, according to multiple reports in state media. This unmanned stealth torpedo is powered by a nuclear reactor and intended by Russian designers to sneak past coastal defenses, like those of the U.S., on the seafloor. The device is intended to deliver a warhead of multiple megatons, Russian officials, causing radioactive waves that would render swathes of the target coastline uninhabitable for decades. In November, Christopher Afford, then Assistant Secretary of State for International Security and Nonproliferation, said that Poseidon is designed to inundate U.S. coastal cities with radioactive tsunamis. Experts agree that the weapon is very real and already coming to fruition. Poseidon has very real Stenson's declined to give details on the torpedo's testing progress so far. Satellite images given by space technology company Maxar detail a stark and continuous buildup of Russian military bases and hardware on the country's Arctic coastline, together with underground storage facilities likely for the Poseidon and other new high-tech weapons. The Russian hardware in the high north area includes bombers and MiG-31 BM jets, and new radar systems close to the coast of Alaska. The Russian buildup has been matched by NATO and U.S. troop and equipment movements. American B-1 Lancer bombers stationed in Norway's land air base have recently completed missions in the eastern Barents Sea, for example. The U.S. military's stealth Sea Wolf submarine was acknowledged by U.S. officials in August as being in the area. There's clearly a military challenge from the Russians in the Arctic, including their refitting of old Cold War bases and build-up of new facilities on the Kola Peninsula near the city of Murmansk. There's clearly a military challenge from the Russians in the Arctic, CNN. The satellite images show the slow and methodical strengthening of airfields and trefoil bases, with a shamrock-like design, daubed in the red, white and blue of the Russian flag, at several locations along Russia's Arctic coast over the past five years. The bases are inside Russian territory and part of a legitimate defense of its borders and coastline. U.S. officials have voiced concern, however, that the forces might be used to establish de facto control over areas of the Arctic that are further afield, and soon to be ice-free. Russia is refurbishing Soviet-era airfields Russia is refurbishing Soviet-era airfields and radar installations, constructing new ports and search and rescue centers, and building up its fleet of nuclear and conventionally powered icebreakers, CNN. It is also expanding its network of air and coastal defense missile systems, thus strengthening its anti-access and area denial capabilities over key portions of the Arctic. Campbell also noted the recent creation of a quick reaction alert force at two Arctic airfields, Rogachevo and Anadar, and the trial of one at Nagorsky airfield last year. Satellite imagery from March 16 shows probable MiG-31 BMS at Nagorsky for what is thought to be the first time, bringing a new capability of Russian stealth air power to the far north. High-tech weapons are also being regularly tested in the Arctic area. Campbell added that in November, Russia claimed the successful test of the Zhurkhan anti-ship hypersonic cruise missile. The Zhurkhan and the Poseidon are part of a new generation of weapons pledged by Putin in 2018 as strategic game-changers in a fast-changing world. At the time U.S. officials scorned the new weapons as technically far-fetched and improbable, yet they appear to be nearing fruition. The Norwegian intelligence chief Stensons told CNN the Zhurkhan has a new technology, with hypersonic speeds, which makes it hard to defend against. On Thursday, 
Russian state news agency TASS cited a source in the military-industrial complex as saying there had been another successful test of the Zhurkhan from the Admiral Gorshkov warship, saying all four test rockets had hit their target, and that another more advanced level of tests would begin in May or June. The climate emergency has removed many of Russia's natural defenses to its north, such as walls of sheet ice, at an unanticipated rate. The melt is moving faster than scientists predicted or thought possible several years ago. The melt is moving faster than scientists predicted or thought possible several years ago. U.S. officials also expressed concern at Moscow's apparent bid to influence the Northern Sea Route, a shipping lane that runs from between Norway and Alaska, along Russia's northern coast, across to the North Atlantic. The NSR potentially halves the time it currently takes shipping containers to reach Europe from Asia via the Suez Canal. Russia's Rosatom state nuclear company released elaborately produced drone video this February of the Kristoff de Marjorie tanker completing an eastern route across the Arctic in winter for the first time, accompanied by the 50 Let Pobyedy nuclear icebreaker for its journey in three of the six Arctic seas. Russia is also attempting to require foreign vessels to obtain permission before entering the NSR. The senior State Department official added, the Russian assertions about the Northern Sea Route is most certainly an effort to lay down some rules of the road, get some de facto acquiescence on the part of the international community, and then claim this is the way things are supposed to work. Elizabeth Buchanan, lecturer of strategic studies at Deakin University, Australia, said that basic geography affords Russia the NSR which is increasingly seeing thinner ice for more of the year making it commercially viable to use as a transport artery. This might yet transform global shipping, and with it the movements of 90 plus percent of all goods globally. Elizabeth Buchanan The State Department official believes the Russians are mostly interested in exporting hydrocarbons, essential to the country's economy, along the route but also in the resources being uncovered by the fast melt. The flexing of their military muscles in the north, key to Moscow's nuclear defense strategy, and also mostly on Russian coastal territory, could be a bid to impose their writ on the wider area, the official said. Russian are testing weapons when the Russian are testing weapons, jamming GPS signals, closing off airspace or sea space for exercises, or flying bombers over the Arctic along the airspace of allies and partners, they are always trying to send a message, the official added. Among these new weapons is the Poseidon 2M39. The plans for this torpedo were initially revealed in an apparently purposeful brandishing of a document discussing its capabilities by a Russian general in 2015. It was subsequently partially dismissed by analysts as a paper tiger weapon, meant to terrify with its apocalyptic destructive powers that appear to slip around current treaty requirements, but not to be successfully deployed. Yet a series of developments in the Arctic, including, according to Russian media reports, the testing of up to three Russian submarines designed to carry the stealth weapon, which has been suggested to be 20 meters long have now led analysts to consider the project real and active. The Bielgorod, a key submarine intended to be armed with a torpedo, will undergo important testing in May, according to a TASS report, although officials in the report stressed that it would not be related to the Poseidon's development. Russia insists motives are peaceful and economic. Russia's foreign ministry declined to comment, yet Moscow has long maintained its goals in the Arctic are economic and peaceful. A March 2020 document by Kremlin policymakers presented Russia's key goals in an area behind 20% of its exports and 10% of its GDP. The strategy focuses on ensuring Russia's territorial integrity and regional peace. It also expresses the need to guarantee high living standards and economic growth in the region as well as developing a resource base and the NSR as a globally competitive national transport corridor. Putin regularly extols the importance of Russia's technological superiority in the Arctic. In November, during the unveiling of a new icebreaker in St. Petersburg, the Russian president said, It is well known that we have a unique icebreaker fleet that holds a leading position in the development and study of Arctic territories. 
we must reaffirm this superiority constantly, every day. Putin said of a submarine exercise last week in which three submarines surfaced at the same time in the polar ice, the Arctic expedition, has no analogues in the Soviet and the modern history of Russia. Manesh Protenberwa, a submarine expert at Jane's fighting ships, said, The reality of the weapon is clear. You can absolutely see development around the torpedo, which is happening. There is a very good probability that the Poseidon will be tested, and then there is a danger of it polluting a lot. Even without a warhead, but definitely with just a nuclear reactor inside. Manesh Protenberwa. Berwa said some of the specifications for the torpedo leaked by the Russians were optimistic and doubted it could reach a speed of 100 knots, around 115 miles per hour, with a 100 megawatts nuclear reactor. He added that at such a speed, it would probably be detected quite easily as it would create a large acoustic signature. Even if you tone it down from the speculation, it is still quite dangerous, he said. Berwa added that the construction of storage bays for the Poseidon, probably around Olaniaguba on the Kola Peninsula, were meant to be complete next year. He also expressed concerns about the Zhurkhan hypersonic missile that Russia says it has tested twice already, which at speeds of 6 to 7 Mach would definitely cause a lot of damage without a particularly having big warheads itself. Kader Zinazisk, professor of international relations at the state-run Norwegian Institute for Defense Studies, said the Poseidon was getting quite real, given the level of infrastructure development and testing of submarines to carry the torpedo. It is absolutely a project that will be used to scare, as a negotiation card in the future, perhaps in arms control talks. It is absolutely a project that will be used to scare, as a negotiation card in the future, perhaps in arms control talks, Zisk said. Stenson's also raised the concern that testing such nuclear weapons could have serious environmental consequences. We are ecologically worried. This is not only a theoretical thing, in fact, we have seen serious accidents in the last few years, he said, referring to the testing of the Burevisnik missile which was reported to have caused a fatal nuclear accident in 2019. We are ecologically worried. This is not only a theoretical thing, in fact, we have seen serious accidents in the last few years.